Hi, everybody. My name is Angela Gulick, and I work for the Writing Lab here at Parkland College. This workshop is entitled Punctuation Review, Semicolons, and Colons. This workshop is designed to give you a general overview of this punctuation. If you have additional questions about this topic or other writing topics, please check out the Center for Academic Success Resources page, where you'll find handouts, PowerPoint workshops, and videos. Also, at the end of this particular presentation, I will provide some online sources that might be useful to you, including some that have online exercises, little quizzes you can use to test yourself. Semicolons and colons sound alike and they look alike, but there's a big difference in how they're used. Here's the basic breakdown for semicolons versus colons. With a semicolon, you need to have a complete sentence on each side. With a colon, you need to have a complete sentence, but then what follows the colon is not another sentence, rather it's a list of items usually separated by commas. That's it. That's the big mystery of semicolons and colons. But let's look at some examples. As I said, semicolons in general are used to separate two complete sentences from each other when there's no other way that the sentences are being separated. For example, there's no coordinating conjunction, such as for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. The first letter of each of those words spells fanboy, so that's one way that you can memorize that list. Here are some examples. My canary and my cat always try to outwit each other. I'm not sure who will win this battle. So we have two complete sentences. My canary and my cat. What about them? They always try to. What do they always try to do? They always try to outwit each other. I'm not. I'm not what. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about what. I'm not sure who will win this battle. So you really just have to look and make sure that you have a complete grammatical sentence on each side and you put a semicolon in between them. You only capitalize the next letter if that word would be capitalized anyway. So the word I am would always be capitalized, but you would normally not capitalize the word that follows a semicolon. Here's another example. I love weekends. My main goal is to get caught up on sleep. So we have a very basic sentence here. I, what do I do? I love, what do I love? I love weekends. My main goal, what about my main goal? My main goal is to do something. What my main goal is to do what? To get caught up on sleep. So I have a semicolon separating my two sentences. Finally, volunteering for charities and nonprofit organizations is really important. There are 79 organizations in our town in need of community volunteers. Using a semicolon is kind of a judgment call. In your mind, you see the two sentences as being particularly related to each other. You want them to be read as a unit as opposed to individual ideas. And so that's really when semicolons come into play, when you want two particularly related sentences to be hooked together a little bit more strongly than if you had just put a period in a capital letter. There's a second use, it's a lesser use of a semicolon, but I would like you to be aware of it. And that is when you have a list of items that already have internal commas. That sounds kind of complex, so we're going to look at a couple of examples. I have lived in Council Bluffs, comma, Iowa, Dubuque, comma, Iowa, Ames, comma, Iowa, Morris, comma, Minnesota, Groton, comma, Connecticut, Anchorage, comma, Alaska, and Champaign, comma, Illinois. I put these in different colors so that you can see that we really do have some units here. We have the red, the green, the light blue, the dark blue, and so on. The semicolon, after each of these two-part terms, simply makes the division a little bit more clear. For example, look at this sentence where you can really see the one-two pairings and compare that to this sentence. 
I have lived in, in Council Bluffs, Iowa, Dubuque, Iowa, Ames, Iowa, Morris, Minnesota, Groton, Connecticut, Anchorage, Alaska, and Champaign, Illinois. If you are not familiar with cities and states and how they're written in English, this might be very confusing where exactly a person has lived. So a semicolon simply creates more distinct boundaries between words that already have commas in them. It's like another comma just wouldn't be strong enough to create a clear boundary. Let's look at this example down here. I want to download Abba's Honey Honey, Johann Sebastian Bach's Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring, The Beatles Here, There, and Everywhere, and Neil Diamond's Cherry Cherry from iTunes. In each case, within this song title is at least one comma. Here's one. Here's one. Here are a couple. And here's one. So by putting semicolons in between the song and the next artist, again, visually, we're just making clearer distinctions between those two part pairings. Obviously, when we're writing reports, we don't put everything in different colors, but I thought that was the best way to show you how a semicolon can create that more clear boundary. Now let's take a look at colons. Colons have a variety of uses, but the main thing to remember is that if you use a colon, you have to have a complete grammatical sentence in front of the colon. Here's some examples. Let's say you want to introduce a list of items. Be sure to bring your survival kit to class, the textbook, sharpened pencils, lots of paper, and a bag of baked nacho cheese Doritos for the teacher. So what comes in front of our colon, be sure to bring your survival kit to class, is a complete sentence. A colon can also introduce an example. My diet is based on two major food groups, popcorn and chocolate. And a colon can be used to introduce a direct quotation. Author Jen Lancaster reminds us of the following. There's almost nothing that sweetened apples and frosty pie crust can't make better. Again, you need to remember just to have a complete sentence in front of the colon. And the only reason I have little asterisks by some of these words is because of the number of times food appeared on this slide. I must have been writing it during lunchtime. I want to point out there are a couple of danger words that people misuse colons with, and they are the, the following uh, words, such as including, as well as, excluding, especially, along with. We often will introduce a list of ideas by one of these phrases, but unless it's a complete grammatical sentence, we don't need the colon. So let's look at an example or two. This is an incorrect use of a colon. A smart winter driver in Illinois will have a lot of safety items in his or her car, such as, that is not a complete grammatical thought. Technically, there's really no need for a colon there, even though we are introducing a list. I have two choices. I can add something to that, to that first sentence to make it a complete sentence, or I can just rewrite it. A smart winter driver in Illinois will have a lot of safety items in his or her car, such as the following. We now have a complete grammatical thought. Our colon is necessary. Or, a smart winter driver will include the following items in his or her car. A cell phone, emergency kit, and so on. Again, you just need a complete sentence in front of such as. My favorite types of movies are musicals, especially... It's not a complete sentence, so we don't need the colon. Down here, my favorite types of movies are musicals, especially these four, is a complete thought. We do need the colon. That's basically it with colons and semicolons. Again, they have pretty specific uses, and uh, I hope that this workshop has helped you sort of separate the two out and not get them confused. If you have additional questions, please come by the Writing Lab in room D120 or check out our CAS resources page where we have a lot more workshops and handouts available. Also, I've listed some online websites that I find useful and I thought you might too. And one of my favorites is this site called Grammar Bytes. Grammar Bytes is a website that's made up of interactive exercises on a variety of grammar issues. So there are these little quizzes that you can take 
You can get feedback to see how well you understand a concept. Also, there are handouts that further explain some of the concepts. This is a fun little website. It uses fun graphics and uh, sound effects, and it's just really engaging, pretty lively. However, I do want you to be aware that the first time you use this site, you might be prompted to download a small program onto your computer. This just allows you to be able to take advantage of those graphics and sound effects. But it's a fun little site. I really recommend checking it out. Thank you so much for your time today. Good luck with all of your projects. And again, please remember those of us in the Writing Lab. We're here to help. Thank you. Bye-bye.